What's up guys, uh, this is Kevin here. Uh, I am back again talking about a interesting, uh, boring sneaker. I know that everybody's made that sort of thing. It's all over the adverts, but it is today gonna be Tom Sachs's latest uh, footwear, I guess, collaboration with Nike. Uh, he has come out with the GPS, the general purpose shoe. So this one launched earlier this month, if I remember correctly, it was like, uh, like early June. Today is uh, June 22nd. So I just got it in literally probably like two hours ago or something. And then I was like, you know what? Let me throw a video. Up. Uh, I want to do essentially a first impressions because I literally have not opened the box and I have a few interesting thoughts about it. So uh, without further ado, Let's get into it. I'm sure all of you guys already know who Tom Sachs is. If you guys are watching this video, he's an American artist, focuses on a lot of, a lot of meticulous, slow and arduous replications of a lot of real world objects. Um, but stuff that he did previously with Nike was with the space camp. Uh, he had a very, um, I guess to say the least infatuation with NASA and space stuff etc. Uh, that's where the Mars Yard 1.0s and 2.0s and I guess 2.5s came into play. That's that central inspiration. I'm not exactly too sure what the inspiration for the general purpose shoe is other than the name general purpose shoe, but here is the box. It just comes in an orange Nike box with Tom Sachs's iconography and their Nike craft sort of partnership here. The paragraph on the inside says, Nike craft shoes are manufactured to the exact specifications of championship athletes throughout the world. The design and construction of Nike craft products support all the activities of your life and tell your story. Nike craft shuns innovation, shuns innovation for its own sake, but embraces it as a necessity. Top quality products fulfill their intended purpose while remaining as hard wearing as possible. Before recycling, there is reuse. Before reuse, there is durability. So I guess that sort of frames this product as a very durable product, or at least that's the value proposition and I guess the frame that they're using. And here they are. Uh, these don't come with any other uh, accessories, which I guess I could have expected uh, just because it's a general purpose shoe. I think the box is almost supposed to be discarded, which I think would have been cool. Um, maybe thefts would have gone up, but if they used how some of the uh, like Nike Crater shoes and um, some of their more recent, I guess, zero waste, well, not zero waste, but their recycled products would come in the shoe box that would be the shipping box itself. I think that would have been pretty cool. But obviously with all the stuff happening with like laser ship, and you know, thefts at like UPS, FedEx, USPS, like all that stuff. Um, I'm sure there is a concern around there. And here is the product itself. Uh, Tom and the team have really sort of pushed the idea that it really isn't the shoe that's important, it's what you do in the shoe. And I think that's true for a lot of uh, iconic footwear. Uh, the whole reason the Air Jordan is the Air Jordan. Sure, it's a great looking shoe. There's plenty of great looking shoes but it's really Jordan himself that made the Air Jordan 1 and the subsequent Jordan 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, uh, like all the way up until he retired, you know, those shoes are iconic. Um, sure, some more than others, but uh, the iconicness and the timelessness comes with, I think, the associated like, oh, if I wear this, I'm gonna be like Jordan, or if I wear this, I'm going to be, you know, X, Y, Z, and. You know, uh, like Kanye wearing like the Aqua 8s. If I wear the 8s or the Aqua 8s, I'm gonna be just like Ye and stuff like that. So it's the um, it's the do that makes the shoe really like, I think, special. Um, so I guess that's the idea that they have with this to create as simple of a shoe as they can to allow the user, me, you, or whoever is able to pick these up, uh, to um, kind of leave our mark on the shoe, which I thought was an interesting idea. Even with the test or the wear tester program that they had, uh, they had a wear tester program for the 2.5s, which I'm still very much looking forward to. I hope the 2.5s come out because he's been seen wearing 
um, the 2.5s up until this release um, with a Vibram sole on the bottom, which kind of don't really make much sense because the FF SFB uh, boot itself has like some sort of uh, folds, almost like the free sole where it has those lines in it. Um, so I don't know how he was able, unless they literally just glued it on, which is what it looks like. Um, but a Vibram sole would be pretty cool. Um, but you know, that's besides the point. I think the popularity of the shoe, I guess, can come in two different ways. One, it's Tom Sachs shoe. Previous Tom Sachs shoes, with the exclusion of the overshoe. The overshoe is still going for about retail and under a thousand, which is great if you guys want to customize it. And you know, like I did a video on that where you could customize it, basically get a Mars Yard 2.1 almost, because it's different from the 2.0 because it has the metal eyelets um, as well as a longer tongue, as well as a more durable sole. If you do choose to keep the blue sole, you can also do a sole swap with an SFB or any other shoe. I've seen someone do a sole swap with like the Nike Overbreak, but it could be due to Tom Sachs's name association, which I mean, yes, if you wanted to resell, you could probably make some good money off of this. Um, I think prices right now are around 300. The shoe itself was a hundred something, I'm sure with tax. Uh, like living in the Bay Area, it became like 160 or some crap like that. But um, the the whole idea of Tom is that he wants you to beat your shoes, which is kind of hard to do if they're going for four, five, six K uh, on the aftermarket. It does like a mental trick. I know that it's supposed to be like, you know, screw that, you know, I'm going to wear my shoes into the ground, yada, yada, yada. But if they're like six K, I feel like the value proposition that is provided with wearing a shoe can't match the wear or the price per wear, if that makes sense. Just intuitively, you know, if, if, if capitalism and like all that stuff didn't exist and the need for money never existed, then yeah, sure. Um, like who cares about the valuation of shoes? But since it does exist, I feel like it plays subconsciously in the minds of everybody who's worn a 2.0 or a, you know, a 1.0 into the ground. Um, and that probably is another reason why people don't wear them at more, as often, unless you're diehard or if they're already beat. Um, so Tom Sachs's name association, or the fact that these are a plain shoe and you're like a diehard Tom Sachs fan who wants to wear these into the ground. Those are the only two camps that I can really see. Um, I, I have a feeling like internally, I didn't really like these shoes upon first look. I thought they were kind of plain and I think that's the idea of it. You're not, it's it's not the product itself, which is kind of counterintuitive saying that in a product review video, but this is a quick look and just like, hopefully these stand up to the test of time. Um, but there are a few cool differentiations between this and the Nike Kill Shot. So talking about the shoe itself, so the shoe, on the bottom just has this waffle outsole, kind of reminds me of the Air Max One, also kind of reminds me of the um, the waffle racer, except for this heel part. I do think it's interesting that they did an entire mold that has Nike Craft with the Tom Sachs wording, as well as the patent number for the original Bill Bowerman waffle tread. Um, the cushion itself, this is a very very hard rubber like it's not it's not squishy like the air jordan 2 rubbers where that one has a much softer eva this seems quite durable which is great um and the sole itself kind of looks like you can replace it um i'm sure like once you wear it out you can probably just replace the bottom with like a vibram outsole i don't have much issues with the sole durability now where i do feel like there will be some issues is this knitting so the shoe itself, very, very short, thin suede. I don't expect much. This is a $100 Nike shoe, so um, some fuse overlay around where your big toe is going to be. And this knit, I don't know exactly the tensile strength of the knit, or I don't really know the durability, because that was a big issue with the 1.0s, is that it would split here the 2.0s did a little bit better but it still did split after plenty of wear um there's another fuse material with this swoosh again another rough suede this is 
pretty much the same as the kill shots. If you have a pair of kill shots, the suede feels exact, like almost one-to-one. -one. Now, the cool part, I think, is the mesh tongue. I've always liked the way that they did this very, very breathable mesh tongue, and it's fused on top, so I doubt that this would ever come apart, but very, very nice fused tongue. And also, I think it's kind of interesting that they connected this, I guess, lace uh, top with the lace toggle here. Um, that's an interesting kind of detail. Here is the Tom Sack serial number. If you guys do want to legit check yours, serial number 2020.331. And this is the Nike style code. So the serial number Tom Sachs is internal serial number. This obviously makes it seem like it was initially started in 2020. Um, for whatever reasons, probably delayed uh, due to COVID pandemic, as well as uh, plenty of other things, I'm sure, development. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much the shoes. I don't know what laces these are either. They feel like just poly laces. I would have liked it if they used um, like rope laces. I just recently got a pair of Defcon vans and then their rope laces are like super, super tightly woven. And I felt like that would have been amazing. Like some, like something with a lot of durability in it. Uh, I would have also liked to have seen maybe some metal eyelets because that was another thing that I really liked about the overshoe um, and where I saw a lot of 2.0s have issues is there. Uh, has this nice microfiber almost felt inner lining right there and then nice heel cushion, a decent amount of heel cushion, but the internal is all kind of a felt poly and then it cuts off to like a nylon right here. But that is pretty much it. There is nothing additional about the insole, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So here's the insole, Nike Craft. This is definitely gonna just rub off on the first wear, oh well. But I would have liked it if they just gave me, I don't know, like a polyurethane insole couldn't have hurt a thicker insole, just something for like more extended comfort wear. Uh, but I, I do feel like I am asking for a bit just because these are uh, supposed to be 109. And one of the interesting parts I think is that this is supposed to be a perennial, perennial, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's supposed to be continually restocked, which would be cool. It would be great to see um, like this model. I know that there's a yellow pair coming out uh, and then I also heard news of like potentially the the OG NASA colorway stuff coming out, but no pictures of that one yet, but the yellow ones have leaked. Um, I'm assuming the restock in August will have this and the yellow pair uh, restocking on their website, which I mean would would be cool to see. That'd be great. Um, and personally, I do find myself a little bit gravitated towards like, just wearing these guys out. Uh, I did apply to be a wear tester, but unfortunately I didn't get that. Um, I think I was one of the first ones to apply, but I don't think I put as much effort in like presenting why I would wanna be a wear tester, you know, to I guess the masses. Uh, I do work in the bio field, so I feel like that would have been a cool opportunity to like test it in potentially biohazardous environments, but Stuff like that. Oh well, uh, I got these in, and they're they're cool. Uh, I I do have like a theory, and this might be too like fucking like giga brain for me to talk about in a sneaker video, but I do think that uh, like you guys remember those memes of like you know like like reject modernity, like re return to tradition, you know, and stuff like that, where like it's like that like Chad guy, and then there's like the fucking like virgin meme walker. Um, I do feel like that is just applying to like us as a whole. I think why shoes like this are so popular and you know, like retro shoes, like the Air Jordan 1 or why New Balance is having a heyday uh, is honestly return to that like tradition type of mentality. I do think, you know, everybody wearing vintage um, and all of the retro stuff that is coming back and a lot of the 
newer technical or even futurist designs might be kind of pushed to the wayside is just because of that whole, oh man, like the better times were before us. That's like a giga brain thing, but I really don't think this is like that impressive of a shoe. I mean, the box itself said Nike crap shuns innovation uh, and only uses it exactly when it's like appropriate. But I mean, yes, uh, I guess it does shun innovation and only uses it like the fused material. I guess that's innovation, uh, even though that's been around for a few years, um, but it shuns innovation for the sake of durability and you know it it would have been nice to see something a little bit more substantial maybe some react in the heel or uh like something like like renew or uh like maybe even mentioning that the tensile net is like stronger like in a technical way um like i have a shoe for example that people do not like and i think is actually quite fantastic is the Yeezy 350 uh, Compact. I think this is actually one of the coolest design shoes, being able to create um, a structured knit upper with ample amount of cushion and cool color variations and just a very unique shape and quite comfortable. I've been using this as like a gym shoe. Uh, and those, again, don't get much attention as they used to. Let me know what you guys think about the shoe. Uh, are you guys planning on picking it up in August or are you guys gonna bite the bullet, pay resale for it right now? I know that resale's around 300. Um, personally, I don't think this is worth 300. I would be remiss to say that I don't think this is worth more than 200. That is really just the eye of the beholder. Like obviously you guys have your own, like if you guys are literally gonna wear this, a thousand times then buying it for 200 300 really isn't that bad if you guys are only going to wear this like 30 to 50 times and you guys are going to pay 300 really isn't worth it for you um so that cost per wear you got to keep that in mind so here is the uh tom Sachs nike craft gps general purpose shoe uh, i will do an on foot and hopefully i will be uploading a video in like I don't know, like, uh, like comment down below what sort of time frame you guys would want like an update. Would, would you guys want like a three month update on the shoe? Cause I, I am hoping to wear these guys almost continuously for the upcoming few months. Uh, I will be visiting Europe, so I will definitely be taking these with me. There might only be a handful of occasions where I might choose more formal footwear or something else. Uh, but I will try my best to wear these, which is kind of funny in a sad way where it's like, oh, oh my God, I'm really trying to wear one pair of sneakers. I'm just, I'm just going up. I'm just, we're just on a whole nother level today. Anyways, thank you guys. So, oh, I forgot. To... This is the Nike Craft t-shirt. I got it during the drop. Uh, it's a cool t-shirt. Uh, maybe I should have gotten two t-shirts. Uh, my t-shirt did come kind of dirty. There are these like white spots. So if you guys also ordered a tee, look out. I don't know if it'll come up, but there are some like white, not white. It's like dark gray, like blemishes. And uh, if I know anything about that, that indicates mold. And I'm going to wash this bitch. <laughs> Tom Sachs, you nasty. <laughs> I don't know what sort of storage conditions that they had it in or if it got shipped over like this, but there are definitely like dark spots, like mild dark spot. Well, on the back, it's a little bit more evident, but uh, some mild dark spots. So I'm gonna give that a good wash. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the GPS. Uh, do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? I've been meaning to post more videos. Hopefully this is the start. I got a bunch of stuff in. I have the new Ronnie 5 uh, New Balances. I have uh, two different color, two different models from the four that he released. I have some Kiko A6 coming in. Uh, I have the Casina Air Max ones. I actually got my fiance a pair. That's, they look amazing by the way. I'm gonna wait until my pair ships from Union, which might take eight months. So maybe I'll see you guys in eight months. Uh, 
and yeah, just a bunch of uh, cool stuff happening. I do have a little bit more time given that I have, I can work from home some days. So during that time, I should be able to put something together. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace. Feels right. Exhausted. It's never the right time to go. I had to think twice before I move. Stand on my ground, break my mood. Choose puddles. Be careful when you choose your steps. Gotta make it right before you left. Gotta make it right before you left. Everybody wanna feel like everything gonna be right. No me over the old. Devil's a lie and I even Devil's a lie and I